Hello everybody, and we are back to these streams and uh, that I am being able to get a little bit of time with amigos, friends, people, presenters, and I say amigos starting with because uh, big serendipity, we were just saying that the testing world is really small. I have here with me uh, my amigo uh, Juan de Dios Delgado, a brother in arms that I had not seen in 12 years? Something? Yeah, I think 12 years or even more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long way. And uh, yeah, there's some background story. We used to work together at the same company. And um, we will keep walking into each other. I think that is a common trend, but with QA, testing, IT, all that uh, yeah. set of fun things. But uh, before we move uh, further, Amigo Juan, why don't give you give us an introduction, who you are, where you work, what do you do? Sure, and um, thank you, Senor Performo, Leandro, <laughs> for inviting me here. Well, my name is Juan Delgado, and uh, I have over, over 12 years uh, doing a lot of testing or as QA. Uh, I, I really focus more in automation testing for, web, for mobile devices, web application, or, or web services. Currently, I work for this company. The name is Movica. So we do a lot of testing for many companies across the, the world. Uh, right now, my clients are in Bellevue, in the Washington area. And uh, usually, right now, I work with different kind of testing. But uh, currently, with the voice assistant testing, doing a lot of voice assistant testing, automation testing. So. That is one of the conference that we are going to present tomorrow here in the PNSQC is about the how to test the Alexa, right? So wait, wait, wait! You are getting into spoiler territory because <laughs> I, 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 I want us to talk a little bit more about that. But uh, to let our viewers know, where do you come from? Uh, Mexico. Uh, um, I born in Aguascalientes. Thing. Aguascalientes is a, a small town. In, in the middle of the country, and I lived there all my life. But for some reason, then I, the, you know, in, <laughs> when you are working, they say, "Oh, can you? Would you like to go to some project on site only for a few months?" Mm -hmm. And now I have here in Seattle more than, more than seven years. Just so, a few months. <laughs> just can, a few can, months. Can you say that months. you live in Seattle now? Yeah, even I settled down in Seattle. All my family. Uh, we are there. I mean, my kids raised there. So right now, are, it's really hard to come back to Mexico. It's, it's, and with the time, because the kids growing up, it's, it's harder. <laughs> it's no, really and, hard. <laughs> and, and I did a question because for so many of the ones that are watching us uh, that would like to literally cross borders and evolve and reach further, here's one. Well, and here's another example, but here's uh, one example of where QA can take you literally places. Yeah. And um, it's a great experience. Uh, are you liking it? And Yeah, I like it. So I like it more when I was single because usually they... This is life. Beware. <laughs> this is life. Yeah, no, because <laughs> you have more flexibility, right? Uh, usually in the past, before to be married, uh, so I traveled to different cities or different countries uh, in US and Europe. So I, I have the fortune to visit many countries or many cities in the United States because because they work and it's something that I really enjoy. Now it's harder, you know. Uh, we're still doing that. I mean, we, we still, I am still doing that, but not, not really often. Uh, I prefer not to do it right now. <laughs> I prefer to just 
uh, stay, um, you know, settle down and not travel a lot. But if we need to do it, uh, I really enjoy to travel and I, I really enjoy to, you know, go on site, meet the client, uh, meet the team and that kind of thing that's really engaged with your project. Mm -hmm. No, and uh, it's, it's been a common topic like uh, we being in conferences, uh, assisting, presenting, where uh, and a common question and what's up with the family how are things doing over there I mean, i'm sure you miss uh, your wife your children while you're away and that's in part of uh, uh, why you are kind of hesitant of traveling now right yes exactly yeah it's hard, <laughs> it's I, hard. I i wonder and well to go back to let's say your beginnings and a, a point that I'm really interested of uh, shining out with you, uh, that you had this trajectory that allowed to leave the country to, because mm. um, it's the dream for many, uh, not only in Mexico, South America, to move to uh, other places where probably the opportunities, uh, uh, quality of life or all that is better. But from your perspective, what would you say were the things that allowed you to Succeed successfully get out of uh, cross the border without being it swimming or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one of the some suggestion that I could that I could uh, could say if someone that is watching us they would like to to work abroad um, or to work on site in another country. Uh, I think the the language uh, is is one of the thing is, is really important. Uh, because you will be in the radar of your bosses, right, or, your, or the management people. So I think it's one of the most important things. And for Mexican people, uh, I remember that many people was really qualified to, to travel and, and to go for some project on site, but maybe the, the visa is a problem, right? And to get mm -hmm. the TM visa, you need to get a bachelor degree. So it's, it's another thing that if you don't have it or, or, or for some, any reason, you could not have it. Is is I think it's a really uh, good point because you need to settle down on that kind of thing to 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 be uh, to be allowed right to travel right to be allowed to be able to work in in United States. So and the other thing is the technical part right. You need to be something that uh, you you will you are willing to learn right because when you work on site it's not like work in in your office or like work right now from home is a little more demanding or you could have more pressure because th you are with the client and and you are physically in the in the office with them really close to, and you, it's, it's a little bit more more demanding but that is something of the thing that uh, will help you to grow up it's something that you need if you need to learn new thing is that kind of the thing if you are that kind of person that you like to grow up you like to learn things you like to uh, enjoy that kind of, of your career path. I, I think it will be really easy for you to to move abroad and to work on site, right? And I think the last the, the last point should be, in some cases, you need to uh, to have luck because not all the companies have the positions or not all the companies have has that kind of flexibility, right? That oh yeah, we we can send you to with the client uh, in in Los Angeles or. Uh, in New York or any other, any other city, right, or any other countries. Sometimes it's not easy even for them, but uh, try to looking for, right? Try to, uh, if, if you don't see that, uh, try to, to see the way, what you need to do inside of your company to, to get that. I see that, I, I think that you need to start with that. You need to start in, inside of your company, see what is the, the, the process, is the, if you see some, some position on site and what you need to do. To, to apply. There, there are uh, many possibilities depending on what you know, where you are, what companies uh, do you work for, or which ones do you manage to work for because that um, makes another difference. Like uh, You can be hired for a company that is, you, don't, you don't live at yet, but because of that you can be requested to move. And now that you mention like dealing in offices outside of Mexico, different places. A question that pops in my mind is, have you ever, or most probably you've had, which ones have been the cultural impacts that you have had um, joining 
it's another country, yeah. it's another culture, and I have stories, but uh, now you're the, <laughs> the one. Uh, can you share any stories, any cool thing? Uh, well, sometimes it's really, uh, there are some stories that are really funny, sometimes it's not really funny because you don't know, sometimes you don't know the culture, so even for you could be... You can get in trouble. Uh, yeah, you can get in <laughs> trouble, right? So, and, but right now I think the companies are really with a lot of diversity and a lot of culture, so one of the stories that uh, I, I don't came up something right now in my mind, but but let's, let's wait for the end of the interview. Okay, Maybe okay. I could remember some funny story just, or just something. Just make it a little bit. <laughs> yes. We will pop yeah. It. Uh -huh. uh, no, I mean, uh, and I was asking because I, I want to, again, shine out a little bit that uh, you are out of Mexico, that you managed to move away. And it's something that often the people that live their own country and uh, arrive at another one that every country is different from each other. And you find something that is like, oh wow, how do I do things here? Or it's uh, it's another thing. Yeah, it's really, even something that is not related to the work, but is, is part yeah, of yeah, yeah. Go, working go abroad, yeah, yeah. is for example, just go to supermarket, right? Maybe you are there, ah, oh, where I can get the chili, right? Because I want to make something to prepare some traditional dish from Mexico uh, and uh, yeah. that, or where I can get a really get uh, a really a real tortilla, right? Not yeah, some yeah. package. So that kind of thing, you start to trying to looking for because, in some point, you miss Mexico and and you want to to you know try to eat the the, Mex the traditional Mexican food or or try to. Uh, get the Mexican beer or something like that, something that, <laughs> something that remember you Mexico and you feel more comfortable with that. But yeah, the story, a funny story is about that, right? For me, it was really hard in the area that I live to get uh, Mexican chili, real Mexican chili to make different type of sauces or that, that kind of thing. Or even if you would like to eat really real tacos, uh, tacos de pastor, it's, oh. it's harder. I mean, I visited maybe like 10 different places, uh, at least in Seattle, to to get the real Mexican uh, kitchen or real Mexican restaurant and say, oh yeah, this is my favorite place now because they really have uh, the, the real the tacos real, de yeah. pastor, yes. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, well, at least I, 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 I like a lot the Mexican food, so I love it, the, the tacos de pastor, and uh, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's a funny story, right? I needed to visit many, many, a restaurants to to to, to find it. yeah to find the the good one uh, yeah hint for anyone looking for a business idea there in Seattle there's a demand for tacos <laughs> al pastor authentic real the real deal uh, so maybe some of our uh, entrepreneur um, listeners watchers <laughs> audience uh, may be interested but okay enough enough of uh, Mexican fun and uh, talking about our roots and challenges. You mentioned something really interesting, mobile testing that you are doing and that your company specializes in. What could you tell that are the main challenges on, like, it's another type of testing, absolutely. Uh, how was the experience for you to move towards there? Because I remember uh, in the old days, it was uh, QDP and all these yeah. uh, automations. How was the transition for you and what did you transition into? Yeah, what not easy. When I was working with QTP and then I moved to mobile devices testing, I need to start again from scratch. So I need to do to start again to do a manual testing to uh -huh. know about what I'm going to test, what, 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 what do I need to do. And then the company have some kind of tool, right? And, and then I started to specialize on that kind of tool, but um, I started to use Python. So that, that opened me a, lo a lot of doors to, to start to, uh, to work with test automation for mobile devices. So I think the big challenge here is if you don't have the, the knowledge of the technology, for example, or, or the programming, is you need to start to, 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 start to, 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 to study that kind of things first. And then the challenge to doing a lot of testing with mobile devices, uh, in my case that I work with Android mobile devices, is when you want to run in parallel different mobile devices, mm. right? So that is a really big challenge because usually when you just do it manually, you have one device and do it, doing it, right? But then if you need to test 10 devices or more than 10 devices, so that was a big challenge because uh, 
was really something that I really, that kind of challenge I really enjoy. So one way to do it is, for example, with Python, there is like a libraries that right now you can have your own farm. So that will help you a lot. Right now we have UI Automator also that helping you to do the UI testing. Uh, and But right now even when you are doing mobile devices, you can test not just the UI, right? You can test uh, uh, even another thing like the APIs or something if your application is allowed to do that, right? But basically with mobile devices, I think the big challenge is to try to test in parallel many devices as possible and also plan your strategy, right? What is your approach? What is your strategy? So if imagine the situation that you need to test one application for Android mobile devices, but if you have a bunch of mobile devices with different brands, different versions, so, so you need to know exactly what kind, of, uh, what kind of mobile devices you are going to use to do that testing, right? Because at the end, we cannot test everything. Yeah. So you need to re really know which one are more aligned to the company or to the application that you would like to test, the mobile application that you would like to test. I, I have heard <clears throat> that especially for Android and Google, it has been kind of problematic because they have all the flavors, uh, yeah, all the variations, flavors, exactly. versions, sizes. Yeah, in some cases, uh, when you say sizes, uh, the, the screen sizes, the screen sizes yeah, it also could be a, a little bit of, of uh, another kind of testing, right? So, but that you need to check if the size of the screen is not broken your UI. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so it's many kind of testing, or what, what, a, di a different kind of testing you like to do. Even in, in my case, I do battery testing. So when battery we have, yeah, battery testing, because sometimes when you release a new build, you don't know if your build is going to drain your battery faster if you implement some method or you implement something or new function in your application that maybe it could drain the battery faster. So uh, for do that also I, uh, was a big challenge because they, they told me at in some point, hey, we need to do battery testing just to, to be secure that our application is not draining the battery, right? Because in some point, some mobile devices have the issue that it's draining the battery and they can blame your application. No, it's your mm. application, right? It's because you install this application and everything will be solved. But sometimes it's, it's, the, it's the device itself or sometimes they have, they have drive, right? Could be your application. So for do that, you need to have special equipment to connect your, uh, some specific devices to, to connect it. And basically it's not similar to performance, but you need to do a lot of analysis because you need to check <laughs> peaks. You need to know exactly do many action and check if those actions are, are, have peaks when it's draining the battery. So you need to do a lot, a lot of analysis, uh, check a lot of graphs for, for that peaks. And when you check the graph, then you need to go to the logs and you will have a bunch of logs. So it's, it's a lot of uh, analysis that maybe at the beginning you need to do it manually, but once you get it or once you find your, the correct events, you can, you can do it in, in the automated way. It's, it's funny that uh, you mention it that way because, and, and you clarify, it's like performance but not performance. And I'm sorry to bring this up to you, but it is performance. <laughs> At least it's not load testing, yeah. which is what um, many think of performance testing, but you are measuring the impact of the application exactly. on the platform, on the device, and, and that counts as performance testing. Yeah, uh, even when they call battery testing. <laughs> no, no, and it's, it's a... Uh, the approach, right? Is, many is, many other places you do a performance test when you see how much the CPU or how much uh, the RAM is consumed, mm -hmm. how much the battery is consumed. And many, and probably you, will, uh, you won't let me lie here, many do not believe me when I say that part of the performance tests that can be done are even measuring temperature. Have you ever had tests with temperature on the device? Only check it, the temperature in the testing that we need to run for many hours. Why? Because imagine that you have a, a, some gadget, right? Uh, for example, Amazon, uh, uh, some gadget that is connected, right? So um, uh, uh, Amazon Echo 3 or something that is, is connected and you need to stress that device for many hours. So in some point, it could be a, uh, very, hot. very hot, exactly. And because it's really, really hot, the performance could be down or just shoot down, right? Uh, or be cold. Or even your test is not going to finish because it's going to drain faster or something like that. So only check the battery to, to ensure that if something happens, just to review, like, like an exception, right? Just to review that if, if, if something happened in the test, is because 
it was really hot or, 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 or the temperature was too high, right? But not, not really, uh, in, not, I don't want to say not interesting thing, but only when it's useful, right? So to get, the, to get information for us to know how to proceed. No, you say that it's not interesting and I consider it to be really <laughs> interesting because yes. you mentioned that you are looking for logs, you are looking for traces, you are diagnosing. That's, that's if you ask me, pretty much uh, comes as performance testing. And wh what is the best is that you hinted, like the battery consumption gets the device hot. Who hasn't had the experience of uh, turning on the GPS or just having the cell phone in the pocket? And suddenly <laughs> it's like, I smell bacon. <laughs> oh no, it's me? The yeah. cell phone is really hot. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they'll explode, right? Because some That's another case, big you know. concern that uh, we gotta be checking, otherwise our devices or our apps may be permanently banned. We don't want those type of situations, and yeah. I'm, I'm sure that those are the type of things that you are looking into with your tests. And when you mention the types of tests, absolutely, you're doing performance tests. Oh, some of those things that you're checking, you are measuring that the, the battery consumption stays similar. When you release, if it spikes, there's a problem. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's more or less what yeah. we do in modern performance tests. Even we do quality calls, I mean, uh, when you make a call, for example, we do like a reality testing. Because when you make a call in some areas, you can be noisy or you cannot be the quality of the call cooled down, right? So we need to be sure that it's because the antennas or, we, or it's because the, the, the new build or the new enhancement that they apply it is wow. making that kind of, is down the performance of the quality of the call. So we have some kind of KPIs for some specific event, event, when you make the calls, that you need to verify the, the, the numbers, right? So at the end, all resuming, check, do action, and check the logs. And that, check, and once you have that, that analysis, do the automation thing to make whatever you would like with that logs, uh, how to are going to present, right? Some sort of continuous analysis and... Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's a continuous test. And I think we went too, too hard or too deep on the performance topic, but you are doing lots of also functional integration and other, other types of uh, automations with uh, mobiles, right? It's, right. Uh, could you share some examples of the type of tests that you do or the ones that uh, the people listening should start learning how to do and provide? Because I think mobile is a underestimated area of QA that we should be paying more attention to, and in different ways. Checking for batteries, not trying to have multiple to generate load. Yeah, well, I went to do a commercial, so in, <laughs> go for it, in go for previous it. That's, that uh, be conference, we have a, I have a video where you can check about how to create a, a automated framework for mobile devices and not die trying. Uh, and basically, uh, answer your question, I suggest that you should start with UI Tomato. I think if you have an Android device with UI Tomato, with iOS Xcode, but I focus more on Android. So UI Tomato is really simple to use. So they will give you an idea about uh, what is the way to test, right? And, and then you need to know what we like to test. If you want to test UI, so UI Tomato will help you a lot. Uh, uh, and, uh, and at the end, you need to know also the basic about programming, right? Uh, because you need to identify, at the end, what we're doing, we need to identify the objects in an application, and you need to do an action in that object. Uh, well, you need, to do an, you need to do an action, right? So basically, is, is the main concept. Is, I'm talking just really, really general, the high picture, but if you go to UI Tomato, if you know about the concept about uh, the actions, as you know, the concept about uh, how to identify an object, uh, that will be really helping you to start in the mobile, uh, in the mobile testing. And another testing that I'm doing, uh, well, I do a, a lot of UI. Uh, right now, we started also to do some kind of API testing because some applications, uh, for example, if you open your Uber, you will see different Uber applications, you will see different uh, in the menu, you will see the dif different section, right? That you say for Uber, Uber Eats, or, or Rides, or something. So maybe each one is a microservice, right? So right now, we start to do a lot of API testing to check that microservices, and they will help you a lot, right? And mm -hmm. it's with Python also. We are using Python to 
Uh, there is a lot of uh, libraries uh, that you can, you know, communicate with the, with your API. So my suggestion is to start with that, to start with Python, know the basics, and then you can start continuously growing up on that area. So you, you don't need to be an expert or a developer, but if you at least know the basics, so you for sure you can you, you will be able to handle it, the part of the mobile devices. Yeah, it's it's really interesting and uh, so many areas that you can be checking. Again, mobile is like a whole new universe of uh, QA. Like when we do uh, functionality, usability, uh, web uh, web performance or web testing. You can equate all that into just a mobile device, and it's a separate, world yeah. different uh, type of things. But in the back end, in the guts of the thing, we now are in a service and microservice uh, page, yeah. if you want to call it. And you've got to start testing differently. And I'm super happy that even as, uh, as you were telling me, and I thought that uh, some of the things that you were testing for were only front end or simulating the whole device, you are also respecting. Uh, somewhat the automation pyramid. You are testing at a different tier just for the APIs, just for the service. Yeah, right? we have different layers. So it depends on what we're going to test. For example, we want to do regression testing, where maybe we're through UI. If we want to do the web service layer, that is the reason that we're doing right now API testing. So it depends on what we like to, to, to test, right? Which layer you would like to attack. So some people say that UI is dead, so you need to do testing in UI. <laughs> I think that. Each layer is important. Maybe in some of cases, someone is going to save you more time than the other one. But I, uh, depends of the necessity of your client, or depends of your uh, how you would like to start. Right? I should suggest to start with with the UI, because if you understand the concept, you don't understand the application itself, how the mobile approach, you will be will be easier when you move to the API. That's uh, a lot of uh, great, very interesting, and deep recommendations that. I think all, all of the people should start to pay attention because, again, mobile is a universe on itself, and we have to start to think all the possible ways and how can we test it. And um, looking out that we are getting close to the end of the of this stream. Uh, first of all, uh, Juan de Dios, what would be uh, the Give us a recommendation or set of recommendations for the people watching us, for the people that want to, I don't know, get in the mode. But it's, this is your open spot. What would you like to recommend the people to succeed, do mobile, or any of your? Uh, I think those have, don't be fair about to try new things. When I moving from mobile um, to then to web services, or, or even when I move from manual or from QTP to to mobile testing uh, with Python, uh, I was really afraid. I would, uh, will I make it? I, I'm not a developer right now. We need to do more, you know, because QTP is more like a, an application to do automation. But when you start to code, it's totally not similar, but it's different. It's another thing. So maybe if some people is fair about that, oh, but I'm not a developer or. Uh, Looks really complicated. Or really, looks really that I cannot make it. Uh, just lose that fear. Uh, I mean that fear. Uh -huh. And try it. I mean try it. I, I this is my only my, my suggestion. If you try it, I think you, you you will get the point that in some point you will get what you would like to achieve. And right now the internet have a lot of library, lots of tutorials. So for sure you will find something that will help you. So just try it. I mean, at the end, if you fail, that's okay. And I failed a lot of times, but that failures made me grow up, made me to learn, and I try it again. So just try it. That's a great recommendation. And uh, yeah, I think as as long as that attempt and that failure doesn't kill you, don't don't go out there go <laughs> doing reckless stuff. But most of the time it won't. And um, we both, I can also attend to that, have failed quite a, bit, quite a bit, made some messes, mistakes, and stuff. And it's really nothing, nothing outstanding or really, really different will happen. Keep moving, keep learning. And speaking of those sources that you mentioned that are there are out there in the internet, you just mentioned a few of uh, your own creation that you have some presentations, some talks. Where can people go and look at them? Because those are super important. 
Uh, usually, well, you can, I'm not a social media guy, but if you go to <laughs> my Facebook, uh, I will post it or I will, in my YouTube channel, uh, it's my personal YouTube channel, but no, that's fine, that's fine. it's there, yeah. so you can find it there. But also, if you, if you look for PNCQC Juan Delgado, you will see the, the presentation that I, I made before. Uh, because usually, in my last presentation, I worked with, uh, I am a professor also for a university in Mexico, or I was. Right now, I'm not giving teaches it's anymore. difficult from afar. Yeah, and for, <laughs> in the last two years, when I was a professor, I, 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 I built teams with them and we, we made more like a hands-on project with them and that kind of hands-on project was presented here. So my suggestion is also, go back to your, the suggestion, is try to also uh, join with someone, someone else, because sometimes people will like to work isolated, right? But sometimes it's better if you work with someone because that will help you also to know more tools. I, I know that many people right now that are manual tester doesn't like to code because they git, right? No, mm. I don't like that kind of thing. I'm not going to learn it. Oh, yeah. My, some of my students didn't want to move there. The, they wanted just to continue delivering things. Copy like, and pasting files. Yeah. And if you start to work with a team, you start to uh, replicate like uh, Scrum or IL, even when you only do it by yourself, and try to these, try to these new tools or the way that, like, like a hands-on project, it will be will be really helping you, and also try to get a mentor. If you know someone that is uh, in a senior position, or you know someone is really good in something, uh, ask him. Can you be my mentor? Can you coach me? And I, I think it's also really helping you because if you are stuck in something, they for sure will be quicker. You 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 get an answer instead of to go to internet and, and look many things that will be there, but will take longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, and uh, I, I I love this type of recommendations where. And feels like they are kind of standard. Everyone has told me like mentors, enablers, yes. guides, uh, learning. It's it's out there, and here you have lots of people very happy to help and present and share the knowledge. And speaking of sharing the knowledge, you will be doing that soon here again because you mentioned that you have already a recording. Um, if I remember well, you're presenting tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm presenting tomorrow. It's not with devices now, it's with more like a gadget with Alexa, Echo 5. And, uh, well, for sure the, the, the PNCQC is going to post it in maybe in two weeks, the conference, and the conference is about how to test Alexa, the voice assistant, because right now everything is with the voice assistant, right? Alexa, do this, Alexa, can you play a song? Alexa, if can you open a video or something? If anyone has mm -hmm. it on speaker and Alexa started doing stuff, sorry for that, we didn't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th that is my conference tomorrow. And also, is, 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 at the end, is with Python. So, and we have a demo, right? So I, we, even I'm going to post the, 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 the project or the proof of concept in, in, in my repository, in my GitHub repository. And yeah, in two weeks you can see the, the conference posted in YouTube. Even I, I will share to uh, me, Senor Performa, to, he can share to you all my material. Or, or that if, if something that I could help, even if really small, well, uh, I will be glad to help. I'll be more than happy to. And uh, speaking of that, you just mentioned a repository, a YouTube, blah, blah. Uh, about to be done with this stream. Where can people find you, find your repository, reach out to you, get in touch? Uh, we will make sure to share all your details and everything when you share them, but um, why don't you tell the people where is uh, Juan Delgado reachable? Yeah, well, usually I just work LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, at Twitter, but just to see the news, not, <laughs> not to post anything. But yeah, I don't have anything like uh, really corp or, or I'm not a social media guy, but but I'm going maybe I, with this I'm going to start to be more frequent in the in the in the Why you not? know the social media, and yeah I will share to Senor Performo my personals my, my Facebook my LinkedIn, and and my YouTube channel just to you can you would like to follow me or you would like to review the material it will be nice. Uh, what's the name of your GitHub? Uh, I think it's Juan Delgado. Huh? Juan Delgado mm -hmm. as well. Okay, yeah. look for Juan Delgado on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, on GitHub. Look for his trainings, uh, get in touch with him. Super awesome. And 
to also let you do a free commercial. Where can people find more about your company or call you if they need more mobile testing or services? Yeah, okay, well, let's go to Mobica. Right now it's this. not, uh, we are only in, here in US, it's in Mexico, right now they are not operating anymore, but they are hiring, doesn't matter right now you're oh, in Mexico or in another, or in Latin, so they are, they are higher. So if you would like to apply, just go to www.mobica.com. Awesome. Just uh, so from both sides, pay attention. If you need mobile services, mobile testing services, call Movica. If you're looking for a job in the mobile testing industry, call Movica. Access their page. And uh, sounds like it's a very interesting place to be. You seem very Yeah, happy. I'm really happy there. Yeah. And you can travel a lot. I travel with them to many cities and even countries. So, mm. yeah, okay. that's really nice. <laughs> Take a look at so, the chances. Uh, with that, Amigo Juan, it's, uh, it has been such a pleasure to see you again. And um, thank you also very much for agreeing to come and sit here with me and uh, share our Mexican experience. Thank you for inviting me. And if X Focus Frame saw this, so. Hola, Hi. amigos. <laughs> Hello, gente. Yeah, I really enjoy. Uh, your conversation <laughs> and thank you so much again for inviting me. Yeah, we were saying, uh, reminding, remembering a lot of people from our past. Uh, Hola, everybody. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I am Q Minds, right? Yeah, I, I was with them too. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. another yeah. collaborator with the Q Minds. <laughs> with Diana and Blanca, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Daphne, right? Yeah, Daphne and, yeah. Yeah, it's another D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <Thank you. laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Daphne, Blanca, there's another possible participant that will be very happy to come and speak about QA and mobile. Yeah, and just we'll... invite me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will let you know. I think uh, they will be happy to mm. have you collaborating. And well, with that, we will be wrapping up uh, this uh, streaming session. But again, as usual, stay tuned because there's much more. I mean, right now we just finished lunch and people went to the sessions but the day is not over yet. And we have lots of entertaining stuff before I have to run and get ready for the keynote. So uh, stay tuned, see you soon. And Juan, thank you very much thank for you. joining us. Bye. Adios everybody, I'm gonna stop the stream. It's a little bit far from the camera. So you will see Juan saying goodbye for a little bit. Adios.